Our next guest speaker is a technical consultant at ChemVet Products Incorporated. He has provided consultancies for Coral AgriVentures Incorporated, Ross Matlayer Farms, AgriDynamics Breeder Corporation, Senor Pedro, August Farms, Malcolm Layer, SP Farm, Manhattan Farm, Dimakali Farm, MM2 Farm, SR Spring Farm, Mandigma Layer Farm, Makalinta Layer Farm, Enza Goat Farm, Royland Goat Farm. He is an AVLI representative to Philippine Veterinary Drug Association. He is also an AVLI representative to Philippine College of Poultry Practitioner. And he was a research assistant for medicinal plants and histochemistry section. He graduated in UP Los Baños in 1984 from the College of Arts and Sciences. Here to talk about broiler production and management, let's welcome Dr. Aldo Amado Alfonso de los Reyes. I'm here to talk about broiler production and management. Uh, that topic is from egg to chickens. So I will delve also on the source of our broilers. But first, we have to understand my outline so that you can readily pick it up. I'll talk about the industry updates, the performance parameters for broilers, tips on management and care of broilers, and what's in store for us in the industry today, and to review some key takeaway points. Okay, so currently, the industry is in a squander, no? In the last farmer's summit, integrators are cautious to increase their volume of broilers because after elections, we don't know, we still have money to buy things and food. The current name is stagnation. The economy is in stagnant. Products are inflated in price resulting to high prices of feed ingredients, number two. And these feed ingredients, because of the climate change, are of poor quality. The supply and demand curve is very erratic now. Small and big integrators are in a quandary of how many they need to have in their cold storage. The war, is causing disruptions through increased price, increased wheat prices, and even the gas. Another problem for our industry is it's taking only 27 to 28 days to come harvest time. The short production cycle is a big uh, challenge for us, for our chickens to grow healthy without other vaccinations. Another big problem for us is the LGU. Right now, the province of Katangas is limiting their, the entry of chickens in their area. Other towns are following suit. So this uh, contributes to the problem of the broiler industry. I, I will not tell much more because we have a speaker talking about the other industry updates, okay? The biggest problem for us is the government policy and importation hampering our production here. Ewan, why importation is the answer. Now we start with our broiler production. From the parent stock, we produce eggs that are incubated in the hatchery for 21 days. And these are brought to our farms, broiler farms, where our objective is to provide optimum environment, develop the appetite and the immune function. Sometimes our sources of chicks come from imported hatching eggs. This is another problem of the industry because we don't know the breeder status of those farms where our eggs came from, okay? If we have good quality breeders, we will produce good quality DOCs. I remember I have 
a 1 million broiler uh, consultancy with a 40,000 breeder capacity. And from the start of hatching up to 65 weeks of our breeder, we produce good broilers. And our vaccination is limited to the hatchery. We don't vaccinate anymore in the grow out farms. This enable us to get age groupings of chicks so that their sizes are almost uniform. A picture of me showing the hatchery in one of my consultancies. I can check on the egg sizes from the breeder farms and even the DOCs. Our objective is to produce day old chicks at 40 to 42 grams of weight. With the development in our broiler industry, we even have caged broilers, climate controlled systems, and still we still have some conventional farms. Now we go to the parameters. I am taking on a strain of bird that is widely used here in the Philippines. At seven weeks, it's 193 grams in body weight. You can see in the charts. I will discuss it later on, on how to attain these targets. As you can see, day 28, it is already 1.615. The ideal for us is to produce birds, broiler birds at 1.5 to 1.6 to attain a 76% recovery during uh, processing of around 1.2 to 1.3. That's the market double size of chickens we like here in the Philippines. Some countries, even one integrator in, implements a different kind of measurement for their efficiency. But for me, this is, an additional work, the best thing is to know the week age, the gain in weight per week, the amount of feeds we will give, the conversion that is FCR, that is the amount of feeds needed to produce one kilo of meat, and of course the mortality. Integrators usually accept 95% recovery. But in my experience, I can get as high as 98% from conventional or CCS housing. So I will hopefully be able to give you some tips. Okay. The first key to a successful broiler operation is, of course, the biosecurity. Most people forget upon harvest the spraying of insecticides. This is vital so that the community will not complain to us of the insects in the area. Once the birds are removed, we apply insecticides without cleaning the house while the house is still warm. So the insects are still there and they will be killed by the insecticides. It's a wrong practice to clean the house first then we apply the insecticide. So the insecticide has no more function because the insects are no longer there. Then from the spraying of insecticides, the following day is already dry. We can start removing equipments, drawing out the curtains, dusting, removal of the litter, and then washing. Uh, for controlled climate system, it is best to use with soap, liquid soap, so that cleaning will be easier. And then what is important is for somebody to inspect it, not the ones doing the work, probably you, the owner, checking it for the pre-disinfection inspection. When everything is in order, it's clean, the equipments, the galloners are there, the water system is cleaned out and drained. So then we can start our disinfection. Common mistakes is done by owners 
spraying, cleaning with the disinfectant already. This is a waste of money and giving a chance for viruses or bacteria to be resistant later on to test disinfectants. I will show you some pictures later on. Then from inspection, we have minor repairs. And of course, this is another our requirement, annual welfare requirement, where we have to install rodents and bird control programs. After that, we disinfect. Commonly, our disinfection is at one liter per one, 200 liters of water. Most disinfectants we have in the market. If your farm is located in, with trees and fruit trees around, it's best to implement another insecticide treatment after the first disinfection. This further limits the population of the insect vectors for our diseases. And then we check the ventilation system, if it's CCS, we do secondary disinfection and then we are ready for our chick arrival. The slide shows here a man trying to clean his feeders with disinfectants already incorporated in the water. What a waste. At the same time, it's a problem for the man because he has no mask, although he is well suited, but he still has no gloves. So we must be sure that our people handling the disinfection are well equipped to avoid uh, poisoning. Now, after our disinfection, we check on our water system. Water is the most essential ingredient for growing our broilers. And you know what? In my practice, before we load a building, I see to it that we and the plugman himself will drink water on the end drainage of the water system. If we cannot drink water there, and if we drink and we have some stomach problem, then we still have problem with our water cleaning. So why do we have to clean it? Because a water system are usually polluted by one, using medication, supplementation, vaccines, and the changing temperature, and also the quality of water present in the farm. So with these pollutants, we need to use commercially available materials for cleaning the water line. There are chlorine-based and hydrogen-based, hydrogen peroxide-based, materials for cleaning the water system. This is an essential ingredient for our successful broiler production. Now our farm is ready for the chicks. The chicks will arrive and Cub has this chart for rejecting quality chicks, retaining the quality chicks and rejecting the bad chicks. Most uh, suppliers have lectured this per farm basis and hopefully you can see the pictures in my slide. So the chicks are selected. We are ready to put them in the house. The best temperature for incoming chicks should be around 30 to 30 degrees Celsius at the bird level. You can see on the Rightmost bottom slide, the reading is 32, so it's a little bit high. That the humidity should be around 60 to 70. The reading here is 79. The lux meter or the brightness of the lighting should be around 30 to 40 lux. So the lux reading of 36 is good. 
From this reaction, you can see that the chicks are already moving away from this source of heat. 32 is a little bit hot. 30 is enough for the chicks. The chicks are moving away from the source and they are going to the side. This will cause trampling problems and higher mortalities. So best we understand for uh, climate control buildings, this is a modified climate control building I'm showing you. The relative humidity must be 70, 60 to 70, and temperature around 30 degrees with a lux of 30 to 40. This brightness of light will enable our chicks to eat well and drink well. Otherwise, if it's dark, they will not eat well. Same as men, chicks, when they travel, especially if they travel a long way, some will stay in one place, some will drink, some like me, Namataba, will eat and drink. So we must ensure that by the eight hours upon arrival, their crops are already filled. You can see in this picture, the crops are filled. These are still pliable to touch. It should not be hard, it should be a little bit soft, but it's full. This indicates a good distribution of beads and good distribution of water. Remember, chicks will favor their own sites of drinking areas. So Plaquemines should be aware that if areas are where most chicks drink, there will be some problem in some nipples in this case. You can see it's a little bit congested. They should have around six to eight birds, but this time they have more than eight birds drinking. By moving around, the plaquemine can notice the drinking problem of some of our chicks. Poor water supply, the birds will not be able to digest the feeds correctly, and you will observe in the pieces undigested feeds. So the birds will not convert well, especially for the first week. In the case of conventional housing, galloners or water source should be less than a foot away from the source of feeds so that the chicks will move a short distance for be able to for them to drink. In this picture, as the man is putting feeds, the galloner is a little bit farther, so you can observe in the other part of the picture that the galloners are not fully utilized. It will result to wastage of some supplements as well as birds being dehydrated. In a well dispersed building, you can see the chicks so well dispersed and really healthy. The first week is a very important part of the bird because from 42 grams, they will have an average of 193 grams weight in seven days. This means at least a 21 gram increase per day in weight using 27 grams average speed given. This is the most critical part of the chick where we must develop their appetite because this is the most efficient stage in the broiler where they can make a 78% utilization of the amount of feeds they eat. So from 42, they become 193 grams. Of course, we, we put in our minds that the, we have the best feeds in town. We are giving the best feeds. But reality, as daily storage of the feeds occur, 
Some loss of nutrients also occur. So we need to supplement them. In water supplementation for bone development, we need vitamin A, D, E, C. Uh, I will delve on it further. Vitamin A is for epithelial cell integrity. Vitamin D is for calcium phosphorus utilization, so we don't have any late chicks. E is for the organs, and C is for the whole integrity of the chicks and versus disease. The first week also, you will see from yellow feathered chicks, it will transform into a white feathered bird. So this is achieved through the higher post protein content of our feeds and, and higher energy. What is critical is to supplement the birds with probiotics. Probiotics are good microorganisms necessary to block out any enteric bad bacteria. And by themselves, they produce enzymes and supplementary natural antibiotics like lactosidine, basic citrusin this helps prevent any disease naturally occurring through the probiotics from the second week the bird will gain 335 grams so they will be already half a kilo 520 grams in weight what is happening is the muscles are already developing, maturing of the digestive system, and the bones are also maturing. So you will develop the frame and the muscles at this stage. At this stage, the bird gained 48 grams per day, but they are getting 74 grams feeds per day. So it's a 65% utilization of the nutrients. So you still need to supplement amino acids for muscular development, the probiotics for the continuing development of the digestive system so they can get more nutrients out of the feeds, and B complexes as these supplements improve the immune system of the birds. At this stage also, depending upon the supplier, it's booster or starter for some. We will ship to a new kind of diet. And most often, the pigs are already in the farm and you haven't started using it yet. The chance of developing mycotoxin problems are always there. So the supplementation of Acidifiers like butyric acid, formic acid, acetic acid, this nullifies the possibility of any mycotoxin. So the best time to supplement for acidifier is during changing of feeds. At the same time, the picture shows the expansion of the brooding area and still some rice houses are available. To avoid lameness if the housing is not CCS type, still bamboo. You can see the birds are comfortable. They are laying around near the feeders, but you will see some problem with their drinking in this galloner while not drinking on the other galloner. This is the lack of movement from the black man, and this should be always done by the black man. Now you need to check on the body weights. If you do sample weighing like this, you don't get the accurate average slide weight of that stage. If individual sample weighing is necessary, so around 10% of the birds, one to two to ten percent is enough for you to appreciate if your birds are getting the body weight targets with the amount of feeds given. Don't use this type of sample weighing. Another problem is 
some wrong forecasting or the integrators are ensuring you have enough supply of feed, maybe transport problem. This kind of storage expose the feeds to one. The roof is open, so if it rains, the feeds will get wet. Two, it's highly overstock. Six to eight bags per piling is enough because the plugman can take take it easily. If it's this high, it might even cause some accidents for your plugman. With this case, the feeder should be elevated already. In this case, you can see some manure going to the feeders and the birds are going inside. So contamination of the feeds with fecal matter is a no-no in broiler farms, as it can produce enteric problems like toxicosis, necrotic enteritis. I won't delve on it because it will be a long session for us if we do so. Now we go to the third week, just like people, it's their teenager week, 15, 16, 17. So they are developing their internal organs. The supplement needed is ADEC for the ovaries testis development. And at this stage, the gain up in weight is only 490 grams. That is only 60% utilization of the piece because you are giving 118 grams. The growth is 70 grams per day. This should readily be monitored in the farm. Actual sample weighing will ensure that we are attaining the body weight because we will harvest by 28 days or the fourth week. If we are not getting it there, we have done something wrong in the first week. Now going to the fourth week, it's near harvest time, 1.6 target at 28 days. So everything will mature and you need supplements like ADEC, amino acid, B complexes, it's always there. And if you practice what I have said a while ago, you can attain body weights of 1.6. I hope this clears some part of the growing in the broiler because we are going to the challenges of the poultry industry now. The challenge now is one, the cases of bird flu is increasing and we still have new cases coming about and a new disease, inclusion body hepatitis, which can cause 60 to 70% mortality. If not, if the breeders are not vaccinated for it. So, this is a difficult challenge for us because our loading schedule will be hampered. If your area is, you are near the area where bird flu is discovered. Second, the integrators remain cautious. I remember before, I had 240,000 broilers, commercial. And my cost of production then was 36 to 39 pesos. Now our cost of production is 78 to 80 pesos. So we need to really be economically aware of how the integrators approaches the growing of the broilers. Of course, the rising price of the feed ingredients will make them adjust the formulation and this you should be aware or be given lecture to on how to give the proper amounts. Oh, I, I should have placed the parameters again here. The biggest concern here is the lack of confidence of, I put layers, Breeders with the, the Department of Agriculture. With the bird flu hitting even the Northern America and Southern America area, the influx of breeder broiler farms for broiler farms for this part of the year is 
very low compared to last year. So we will apparently have a shortage of broiler come the last quarter of this year. So the best time to grow your broiler is now. The importation of frozen meat is another big problem, but Filipinos are noted to like the fresh harvested chickens. So it's not a big problem except for the importation of these chicks bringing the prices. Supposedly, it will bring the prices down, but it did not. So in conclusion, I need to summarize what I have said to you. The key takeaways are one, we have to be in congruence with the project of our contract grow, uh, contract integrators. And biosecurity remains to be our best weapon versus any diseases. Oral supplementations are needed around two pesos per, per group, per bird. This is enough to combat the problems with the feeds. During my time as a broiler commercial producer, I always make it a point for one of my men to do the lectures before we have another placement. So every time one will volunteer, I give them payment for that, around at that time 200 to 400 pesos. If they forgot something in our procedure, I subtract one peso. It's a very good practice so that each and everyone will be aware of the things they will do again for the next load. It also enhances the ability of my black men to recognize things that are different from the previous growth. It's a good practice. I hope you can do it. And then with the influx of webinars and Zoom meetings like this, you can readily avail of current technologies and practices in seminars conducted. Broiler racing is here to stay. We love chickens. We have Muslim brothers that love chickens. So, Tough times coming, but tough people remain. Every day we are never too young to, or too old to learn and unlearn things in raising broilers. Maybe we will have broilers that are featherless that will attain 80% recovery in the near future. Thank you very much for your time listening to me. And if you have any questions, the best time is now. <laughs>